guys want a shot at winning a copy of Call of Duty World War II for the console of your choice for absolutely free, a couple of my friends and I are doing a little giveaway. Link is down there in the description below. Go check it out if you're interested. So we're just a couple of days away now from Call of Duty World War II's release, and I say that not necessarily just to be repetitive as we have been the past couple of videos, but more so because it's finally hitting me that we are literally in the same week that Call of Duty World War II is going to launch. This Friday, we are seriously in the same working week even as when this comes off. So it's now starting to come full throttle. Everything is really starting to come closer. And if you're anticipating the wait, it's only a little bit longer. So hang in there. I think we can make it together. That said, with all this now coming up upon us very fast, I think it's time to prep ourselves for what we can expect going into Call of Duty World War II's launch. What can we do to absolutely maximize everything about our playing experience? And so I think I think in the next couple of days we're going to take a look at some things like that, so all while maybe detailing some more leaks if they come out, things just overall pertaining to Call of Duty World War 2 and getting us all ready to jump right in. So in this one today I want to give you guys my list of 7 weapons that I definitely don't think you should underestimate, or I guess another way of saying it is you totally should not sleep on these weapons because they can totally help you out, it's just a matter of you giving them the chance. So this list is 100% all personal preference based, it's something that they're my suggestions by no means are you absolutely required to give every single one of these a shot if you're not fancying them too much but they're weapons that I've played around with that I think definitely stand out in terms of being weapons that you can shred with but also not every single one is one of those ones that everyone will be using like the PPSH like the Springfield like the Thompson like the M1 Garand all those kind of weapons that might be on the surface the ones that everybody gravitates towards immediately some of these might be at that top level but a lot of these really are the ones you might overlook so with that said I want to be giving you guys my list of these weapons you totally should not underestimate and definitely should give a shot especially jumping into the game immediately so that said the first things first are a few housekeeping things once again this is all subjective if you guys have any weapons you think definitely could be an advantage going into the launch of the game and jumping right in are these little underestimated weapons feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below and even it might help somebody else out as they're entering the game as well too and they may love the weapon and not ever even really know about it except for maybe your comments so feel free to drop it and then secondly the big thing that I want to talk about are some of these weapons actually have had their names changed since the beta at least that's what we've seen from some of the early gameplay of the early versions of COD World War 2 out there in the wild some of the people that have been lucky enough to get the game early and then leaked everything out there's some weapons that have had their names changed, so for that I'll mention both names as such, both as you remember them in the beta, and what they are called out of these builds. Now, they still could be reverted back in the full build, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So that said though, jumping right into the list, we're going to start out with a rifle here at this one, one that I think definitely can earn the title of Old Reliable. It packs a punch both in close quarters, but of course at range, because it is a rifle, that being the STG-44. Now this rifle, if you throw on a grip, I think it's something you definitely don't want to mess with in terms of the enemy doesn't want to mess with it because there's no recoil just all laser now coming up on the full launch of the game I'd maybe recommend versatile the basic training it's essentially stalker if you use it or you can keep it within the infantry division and rank that division up to get the ability without costing your basic training just because I think the only hindrance of this weapon is its slow side-to-side -side strafing speed if you are aiming down sight so that means you can get caught in gunfire a little easier and and it might be something that deters a little bit of the more mobile player from using it. However, overall, the weapon itself is great. I think the fire rate, the damage, the range, all that kind of stuff really comes back into one and once again earns that title of Old Reliable. I wasn't the biggest AR player within Call of Duty World War II, save for trying to get some footage for weapon class setups and all that kind of stuff, but the STG-44 was one of those ones that definitely brought me back to wanting to play more with the rifles. So that said, I'm excited to get my hands on it once again and hopefully you guys check it out as well too. Now, moving over to the second weapon that I want to talk about here at this one, that's the Grease Gun or what is now known as the M3. And I've said it since day one of the beta, being a base weapon and assuming they don't mess around too much with the unlock levels, I've said that the Grease Gun or the M3 is one of the most slept on weapons in the game. Even as of recently, I've seen it a lot in the comments asking how much gameplay of the grease gun do I actually have well to answer you 
It's a lot, because the thing is just amazing with the right setup. Being a base weapon that you can jump right in with, I think that's probably one of the biggest things here that is an advantage to the weapon itself, because you can jump right in, have an equal playing field, I guess, if you want to put it that way against all your other enemies in terms of what they're using, but if you end up ranking it up, unlocking, say, quick draw, extended mags, maybe grip, though it's not necessarily essential, maybe throw on rapid fire in there as well too, it's just gonna be something that rips through the faces of enemies. Really, there's no shortage of ways that I think you can make this weapon a monster of a gun, and that's what I think is great about it. There's so many different options with it. Its base fire rate may be low, as is its recoil, since its center speed allows it to recover and reset at a very nice pace, but it's also very controllable, and if your shots are on, you won't need a high fire rate because you'll shred through enemies as is. So, base weapon and something that actually does well, I'll take it. Now, next up is the Lee Enfield, or the Commonwealth as it was known in the beta, and I wanted to throw in a sniper in this one just for the fact that I'm sure a lot of people in the community will want to try out sniping at some point in time, or either just right at the beginning, and from what I saw in the beta, the M1903 Springfield is the go-to once it's available to unlock. So, that said, it's always going to be there in the full game, but what I mean is, even before we saw it, sure the Lee Enfield or Commonwealth at the time was the default as it's a bold action, but when there was multiple, the M1903 was definitely the go-to that everybody gravitated towards. But aside from the damage properties, there's not all that much that's a clear-cut advantage comparing the two to me. If you want a quick jump on sniping, I definitely suggest the Lee Enfield definitely right off the bat. With a decent fire rate for a bold action rifle, a damage that could be a little bit better, sure, but you'll still one shot to the chest and up so you can make your shots count. All these things definitely make it something very viable. And talking about shots, 10 shots right off the bat with the base weapon is pretty nice if you're looking for something that you don't have to reload every five seconds. And I won't lie, if you pop on a four times or the ACOG equivalent, it becomes a ton of fun to run around with a little bit more. It's the middle point between the iron sights and a full scope, and if your goal is quick scoping, it makes that and maybe going for clips very enjoyable. Though, of course, you certainly don't need to go for those to test out the weapon for yourself. Now, the next weapon I want to talk about is the Type 100, and I made a video about this before the beta went live, right after I got home from recording footage at Sledgehammer Studio a few months back now at this point, and I immediately recommended the weapon in a video, boldly stating that I thought it may be the best SMG in the beta. And while we ended up seeing a plethora of weapon choices in the beta and even in the SMG category alone, I still believe that it's easily one of the best. Perhaps it's not comparable for the best in fire rates and damage and other properties, but reliability? Absolutely. A bit faster firing than the M3 grease gun, the Type 100 is still incredibly easy to manage and with a center speed that keeps you steady, iron sights that may be some of the best in the game, and a mobility that rivals the most portable of weapons, the Type 100 is easily one of my go-to choices here. It's just one that's, as a run and gun player, I think is an absolute must to at least test out. So that said, jumping into it, it's not one of the ones that is restricted too high at an unlock level, so definitely give it a go on day one if you can because it's definitely worth it. And the next one that I want to mention is the M1A1 Carbine, a semi-automatic and the only one out of this list at that, though to be fair we did include a bolt action rifle, so maybe it all works out. I easily could have put the Garand in this list, but for me, the one that will always reign supreme in a head-to-head -head is the M1A1. Nothing against the Garand, it's just personal preference for me. While this one, like one of the final two, is attained a bit later, I put it in the list because I truly believe it's a great asset. That said, if you jump in, don't be deterred by the semi-automatic nature, and of course, if the base weapon fire rate is anything like the beta, you're gonna need some patience with this one because if it is like that, you're totally gonna need the rapid fire attachment and that requires ranking the weapon up. But once you get that rapid fire, throw on a grip, maybe extended mags as well too in the infantry division, you're gonna rip through enemies. And like an aged wine, it only gets better with time, which now that I make that reference, probably isn't the best because I'm not the most prominent wine aficionado and who knows how many of you guys are even of legal age, but regardless, if you give it a chance, it's a marksman rifle of COD World War II, which means if your shots are precise, they'll definitely count and you can hit some dingers off it. Moving along, the final SMG that I want to talk about because as we saw with the beta, SMGs are pretty prominent, so I figured we'd throw a couple in here that maybe you might not try out immediately and maybe you'll get away from gravitating towards just the PPSH, but this one is the only only classified weapon I'll be including, that being the MP40. Now it's the only classified weapon that I'll be including in this list because it's the only classified weapon I've already had a chance to sit down with and play. Only available in the E3 build, it's one very few may have experience with going into the full launch of COD World War II, but I'll tell you, go for this weapon. 
while it's not attached to any specific level rank, but instead unlockable at your own pace when you reach the Airborne Prestige 1, the MP40 has a well-controlled fire rate, recoil, and from E3, exceptional damage. The mobility is definitely one of the things that I think is its greatest advantage as well too, similar to the Type 100 in my books, but that's certainly a good thing. And this weapon, once again, is definitely for those that love to run and gun, so if that's you, definitely go for it, and I think that the Airborne Division will be one that you'll gravitate towards as well too, so it shouldn't take you all that much time to unlock it. Maybe around, say, rank 15, 20, 25, depending on how long it takes to rank up each individual level of a division. So that said, give it a shot, go for it, because it's definitely worth it. Now, the final weapon that I want to mention here today is the Bar or the Browning Automatic Rifle. And from what a lot of you guys picked up on within the classifications and everything like that, it's not an LMG. It's a rifle within Call of Duty World War II, so though that might seem weird to some of you guys, this is the last unlockable rifle aside from the SVT, which is only available as the Division Prestige reward, but the Browning Automatic Rifle or the BAR is one that I think is probably once again one of the best weapons in the game. Though we didn't get all that much hands-on experience except for at E3, it is one that Having played with it, it can definitely rip through enemies. So the damage, the fire rates, the recoil, all of it is incredibly manageable and is for sure a weapon that you want to have in your arsenal. Now, the crazy part is that it actually isn't half bad in close quarters as well, though it's a rifle suited for, say, medium range, maybe a little bit more further than medium, not necessarily sniper range, that sort of long range, but still, it's very versatile even in close quarters. It's mobile compared to other rifles, and overall, I think this one might be one of my favorite weapons in the game. So, that said, though it is the highest unlockable weapon that we'll be talking about in this list, it's one that you definitely do not want to underestimate. So that said, give it a go, rank up for it, it's definitely worth it. But with that said, that's going to conclude our list of seven weapons you definitely do not want to underestimate here going into the full launch of Call of Duty World War II. Now, of course, all of these, once again, are subjective, all personal preference based. So if you guys have anything you guys want to add, feel free to let me know down in the comment section down below. Or if you guys don't necessarily agree with the list, once again, feel free to let me know. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. We are so close to Call of Duty World War II. I'm incredibly excited. Hopefully you guys are as well too. And that said, if you guys want to stay up to date with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War II, both information, tips, tricks, best weapons, best class setups, leaks, whatever it may be, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a beat. We're going to be killing it with the content going up into the full launch here and then furthermore afterwards as well too. So if you guys don't want to miss anything, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with absolutely all of it. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter, so if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, one final thing, as I've said the past couple of videos, truly thank you guys so much for the absolutely insane support on the videos as of late. It means the world to me, and I truly do appreciate every single one of you coming out, supporting the videos, checking it out, all that kind of stuff. So, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. Hopefully, you guys enjoy what you have seen thus far, and hopefully, you guys continue to enjoy it going forward. So, that said, thank you guys all so much for everything. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Manazo Espresso. Take care and peace.